Hello everyone again from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today we're going to be having a look at one of the most popular cameras ever produced by the Olympus Camera Company and that is the Olympus Trip 35. Now if you're interested in purchasing this Olympus Trip or another vintage Japanese camera uh, please check out my Etsy and eBay stores. I sell lots of uh, vintage Japanese cameras. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So, getting back to our Olympus Trip. Uh, the Olympus Trip 35 uh, entered production in 1967. And it was something of a, a full frame 35 millimeter version of Olympus's uh, popular uh, pin series. If you look at the Trip 35, uh, its design, its lines, the pattern on the leatherette, uh, it's very similar to the Olympus Pin F. Uh, half-frame SLR camera. Uh, the Trip 35 began production in 1967 and it was produced until 1984, giving it a 17-year production run, which is a remarkable run for any product, let alone something like a camera where the technology evolves so quickly. And the reason the Trip 35 was produced for so long is because it was an excellent camera and sales of it were quite strong throughout its entire production run. Uh, it was a popular camera because it was very well made, it was easy to use, it had an excellent lens, and uh, it was capable of taking really great pictures. We'll take a look at the layout of the controls, and as I turn the camera around here, you can notice that the, the design is very clean. There's a, a minimum of buttons and controls and other things on it. If we take a look at the top cover, uh, we have the uh, uh, film frame counter, we have the shutter button and the film rewind knob. Pretty simple. Oh, and uh, the trip comes with a hot shoe for the flash, so it's easy to adapt a flash to, to, uh, to one of these cameras. If we take a look at the back of the top cover, we have the viewfinder window and we have the shutter cocking and film winding knob. Taking a look at the bottom of the camera, we have the release here for rewinding the film, and you can see the catch for opening the film door. Most of the controls you're going to find are on the, the lens itself. Uh, at the very front, on, you have a knurled uh, chrome ring, which you use to set the film speed for the film you have loaded in the camera. Behind that, you have the focusing ring. And behind the focusing ring, you have the aperture ring. The Olympus Trip 35 is a scale focus camera. Uh, scale fo focusing is a very fast and simple system on uh, cameras which don't have a very fast lens, like the one on the Trip 35. It's quite easy to use. If you look at the lens uh, barrel, you'll see uh, a number of uh, indicators. The first one at minimum focus showing uh, mm -hmm head and shoulders and then at the end we have a, a mountain here which you would set for infinity focus. You can focus the camera by either looking at the top of the uh, focusing ring and just matching the symbol to the red line and also it's visible when you look through the viewfinder. There's a small window underneath and if you look to the bottom right of the viewfinder as you are uh, composing your photo you can see where the camera is focused. The Olympus uh, Trip 35 has a really uh, simple selenium light meter system which does not require any batteries and allows for automatic shooting. Uh, the aperture ring here shows the settings from f2.8 to f22 and A for automatic. When you're shooting one of these cameras I recommend that you leave it on the A. Uh, you're going to get the best results from that and uh, in most cases the camera will pick the, the perfect shutter speed and aperture setting. If you want to be a little bit more creative you can try using the uh, manual aperture settings but uh, these are kind of hit and miss unless you're really familiar with the camera and know how to use it. Uh, the metering system is quite simple. Uh, the selenium meter picks up a light signal here in this uh, ring around the front of the lens and it causes a meter needle to move back and forth inside the camera and there's a mechanism which moves up or down when you push the shutter button and depending on the location of the, the needle this will limit the travel of the selector mechanisms for the shutter speed and aperture allowing a mechanical automatic system. 
it's quite reliable and very simple and uh, delivers excellent results. The only shortcoming to this system is that uh, it can become dirty or corroded over time uh, and cause the, uh, cause the selector uh, levers to stick. Uh, they're not that difficult to clean. Uh, if, if you wish to clean them off and get the uh, mechanism working again, uh, it's, you remove the film rewind knob. There are two screws underneath which you remove. There's another screw here. You remove that and the top cover lifts right off. Uh, be sure not to lose the shutter button. And below the viewfinder window, uh, you'll see the mechanism which should be moving up and down as you push the shutter button. If it's not moving up and down, a few drops of lighter fluid applied to it and a little bit of working of the shutter button will usually get it going again. A good way to tell if these cameras are in shootable condition is just uh, wind the shutter level and cover up the front of the lens with your hands or the uh, uh, lens cap so light can't get to the meter and then push the shutter button. And if the mechanism is working, you'll see the red flag pop up. You can kind of see it in the viewfinder here as I push it down. The red flag pops up when there's not enough light for the camera to take uh, uh, a good photo. If I remove my hand and allow enough light to hit the meter and lens and I push the shutter button, it will fire properly. Uh, you can check how well it's working by uh, working the shutter button uh, partially covered or half covered. As you cover up the light meter, the aperture should open further and further uh, until the point that, that the shutter won't fire anymore. And as more light hits it as you depress the button, you should see the uh, aperture shut, uh, closing down. Another good thing about the Olympus uh, Trip 35 is that uh, it doesn't require much in the way of light seals. It has a, a double channel system here around the film door. The only light seal that is necessary is the one which goes on the hinge. So if you have a light leak in the camera, it's quite simple to fix the light leak. Uh, there were two versions of the Olympus Trip 35 made over 17 years. The silver one, uh, like the one that I'm showing here, and then a much harder to find a black paint version and I have uh, a good example here. Uh, the black paint cameras Olympus produced uh, for the PIN series and the TRIP35 series. The first of the small black paint cameras, actually the first black paint cameras, probably the Olympus Wide S and the black white paint ones are really really rare. And then in the PIN series they made the PIN W uh, which is a, a rather scarce camera but which you can still find and then they had a black paint PIN S and I might see one of these every two or three years. That's how uncommon they are. Uh, the PIN F series featured, uh, the FT was available in black and the black ones are not so hard to find. Uh, and the black paint was carried over to the TRIP35 and the Olympus OM SLRs. And the black is just black paint over brass. If you, you know, come across a well-worn one, you'll see the brass coming through in the corners. And if you own one of these and you should use it long enough or use it hard, you know, you'll, you'll start to see the brass showing through. Anyway, uh, that's it for my uh, quick review of the uh, Olympus Trip 35. And I'll have both of these uh, cameras listed on my Etsy and eBay stores uh, shortly if you're interested in buying them. Uh, go ahead and uh, please check out the other cameras I have available. I'll be posting more videos shortly, so please stay tuned. Uh, thanks a lot for viewing and hope to see you again soon. Uh, goodbye.